We just made these crazy easy acrylic wind spinners and we'll show you how we did it right now. <laughs> what is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do a build it or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week, every Tuesday and Friday. And this week, we're taking it to the skies. <laughs> this week we had one of our top tier patrons had a request for a project. We actually threw a little blast out there asking for requests. So if you've got some, let us know. Yeah, what do you want to see? Leave <laughs> us a comment. She wants to see some acrylic projects, and so do you, I. And uh, I. Yes, we've been wanting to do some stuff with acrylic, and we just keep pushing it to the back burner with other ideas. But we're going to do an acrylic series. We've got like three or four things lined up that we're going to do. So this week, we're going to do some wind spinners with acrylic. Maybe it's something you hadn't thought about yet. And not just wind spinners, Kim. <laughs> Halloween inspired wind spinners. Well, we gotta stick with the theme. Yeah. We gotta stick with the season. And did you know you can sublimate on acrylic? I did not. <laughs> he did too. He was Only like... just now. <laughs> so we're gonna show you how to sublimate on these wind spinners, cut them out of acrylic, and show you how quick and easy it is. If you're looking for a quick and easy project for craft shows, this project might be it. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed some acrylic because this is an acrylic project. We needed a <laughs> heat gun so we could heat up the acrylic to bend it, something to hang the acrylic with so we have some string, and then some hooks to assist the string with the hanging. Or chain. String or chain. String or chain. And we're going to need some sublimation paper because we're going to sublimate on one of them. At and least one of them. That is the biggest sheet of sublimation paper I think I've ever seen. <laughs> and we're going to be using our heat press. Oh, and our X-Tool P2 will be doing all of our acrylic cutting for us. Step two, we're going to create our design. We're going to do our design in Creative Space. Right. You can download a wind spinner design anywhere but we're going to show you how to make your own wind spinner design it's super easy to do in creative space or i think we're going to show you a quick version in adobe illustrator and that way you can make any design that you want you can use your initials you can use any graphic that you find on the internet and you can make this shape in multiple different styles and you don't have to just stick to a basic scalloped edge and i think it'll actually be quicker to make your own than to go out and find one paper for it and download it. Alright, we're gonna start in Creative Space and we're gonna make a scallop frame first. That's what Kim wants to do first. So we're gonna make a scallop frame. So I'm gonna use my circle tool to draw a circle holding shift. Now I'm gonna go up to my array tool and I'm gonna go circular array. Now let's say this is the space between them. This is where it's sitting right now and then you're going to step the spaces between them. So we'll start with 10 and 10. Let's go to 5. Oop, 8. 7. <laughs> that was 4. <laughs> I guess I could just use the. Oh, that steps down. Partial numbers. 6. Well, before that, let's add some circles. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks scallopy. Maybe one less circle. Okay, what do you think? I'll tell you when it when we take the fill. When we fill it, and I can see it like that. Oh, oh all right, all right. So we'll hey, we'll say okay. We got a nice little scallop frame. We'll select everything, and we're gonna come up, combine, and unite. Now, these that be, looks nice. leaves me a hole in the middle, and I can't really ungroup it. So I'm going to hide that hole in the middle by putting a circle. Hold shift, draw another circle. It's a circle right in the middle. And we'll combine, unite. Scallop frame, Kim. Wow, oh, that was so fast. So fast. Add some. Uh, yeah, let's let add the outside it. layers. How big do you want the inside? Four inches. Yes. 
four this. inches. I'm showing that, him. Yeah, he, she's showing me with her hands. <laughs> it looks to be about four inches. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna start to give it its little uh, wind wind chimeness to it. What is it? The spin. Yes. The spin. Now we'll give it some spins. So gonna... Angie's. <laughs> We'll give it an outline. I don't want the inner outer line, the inner outline. So we'll just uncheck that. And I think the spaces between the whatever those things are called spleens, splines, things should be about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, right? Okay. All Looks right. good. Looks so, about right. Now that one's selected, and we're going to add another outline. But we want these thicker, right? The actual spleens to be thicker. So we'll make those quarter inch. What do you think? Does that look too thick? Okay, so that's the first. That's the spacing. Oops. And then the next one is the actual. Yeah, that was the spacing, and now we're going to make the actual. Ribs. The ribs, yeah. Point. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna say what well, quarter inch. Yeah. We'll yeah, she's holding her it. fingers out. It I'm showing about him. quarter inch. <laughs> like, I have to visually. I'm such a visual person. I have to look at it. All right, now I'm gonna select this guy, and then the one I just made. We're gonna go up and combine, subtract, over that. So now look. That's all one object. I'll even move it over here. All one object. I'm going to select that and we'll give it an outline again. Two, five. Give this an outline. Two. My period doesn't seem to work. And well, I got this. Just... So, when you do that, you're taking away... Taking away the middle. It's, oh, the middle it's like subtracting piece. the middle piece from it. Okay. This is the long way. Here in a second, I think I'm going to show you how to do it way faster in Illustrator. I mean, like... But you can do it here in Creative Space, yeah. which oh, is yeah. pretty cool. You could totally do it here in Creative Space. I mean, I was surprised that I was able to do it in Creative Space. Pleasantly surprised that I was able to do it in Creative Space. Combine, subtract, overlap. All right, I have five of them now. Okay, now how big is it? Now how big? Because I'm going to sublimate on this one, and I want the whole thing to be Seven eight inches. inches. Oh, you want it to be eight inches? All yes. Right, let's add another one. Okay. Whoop. And right, now we're at about eight inches. So. All right. I'm going to insert a rectangle. The rectangle is. Should I just stop it at the bottom or should it hang past? This is what's going to unite all the little. Stop spines. it at the bottom, but you do need to make a little loop for hanging at the top. Yeah. So it's. Let's see. Make it a quarter inch wide. What do you think? Yep. Woo. Or 24 inches wide. Periods are important. Woo. Let's select everything. That's okay up there. Mm -hmm. How long do you think that is? Like two inches? You can have a little measuring tool. Well, you can check Let's the top. It. Go hit the top right. outer. Well, yeah. this is just about eight. And the whole thing is. This is 1.3 inches. Yeah. One and third. I think you need more. No. Okay. All right, so let's grab everything now. I'll come up to combine, unite. 
Boom, there we have it. All right, you guys want to see how fast you can do this same thing in Illustrator? All right, here's my pumpkin, right? I grab my pumpkin's outer line and we'll go object, path, offset path. We'll say the first one is going to be 0.25, about eighth of an inch. Bam. Actually, let's make it a quarter inch. So object, I'm going to show you an even faster way. Offset path, we'll just go straight quarter inch, rounded, right? Mm -hmm. Now I have one. So now I'm going to come over here to my window. I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to create a new action. We're going to call this one Action Jackson, <laughs> right? Action Jackson, we got it. Here it is down here. I'm already recording. So I'm going to go to object because I have it selected. Path, outline, oh, offset path, quarter inch. OK, I'm going to stop recording now. Now I have this one selected. Just going to hit my little play button. Play. Now, how many did you want, Kim? <laughs> what was it? Five? One, two, three, four, five six so i guess we can well let's see how big it is let's see so the other one had 0.125 between them this one is a quarter inch between them well i haven't finished yet no oh, because okay. i can go ahead and make these oh there you go well, yeah okay so, well let's not do that because i ended up doing the pumpkin face but let's make this like 10 points there you go see oh, yeah nice all, all right. right how big is that whole thing then this whole thing is seven inches well seven and a half about seven and a half okay that's fine that's good mm -hmm. i mean we can go ahead and scale it to a little bit there you go we're at eight inches okay looks good yes all right so now we're going to take our line tool I it's where the it's spiral. where the spiral is, right? It's where the spiral is. Just you just have to select this. it. This is just this. There we go. Alright, so everything's got a line. Let's group these guys. Let's group these guys. Oh, one more time. Let's group these guys. Let's group it. Oh, I was holding caps. Group these guys. Now we'll grab everything. Make sure everything is aligned horizontal. We'll grab everything that's got a stroke on it. I don't think I want to grab this last guy, right? He's going to be solid. Mm -hmm. Take his stroke. Wait. Let's grab everything that's got a stroke on it. Object. Path. Outline stroke. I'll grab this guy in the middle now and we'll go to Window, Pathfinder, and we'll unite everything. Select everything again. We're going to get rid of its fill but, and then we're going to stroke it all red. You're right. There you go. Yeah, you got it. I was afraid you were going to get rid of his face, but it's there. No, it's back there. That's back there. <laughs> All right, let's export this as a SVG and let's start saving these. Let's start cutting these things. If you want to see a more detailed version of this or slower, we do an Illustrator class over on Zoom with our top tier patrons every second Tuesday of the month. It's technically a jack o lantern. I already had a jack o lantern. So. All right, Kim said we forgot to include a little hole for the string, so I'm going to add a little hole for the string. First, let's do a circle. Half inch. Make sure you're aligned. And I'm going to unite up. We do the same thing over here. Little circle. Little half inch guy. 
Whoa, we're a five inch guy. Whoa. Move him at the top over here. I'm going to make one more circle. This one's going to be a tiny circle. Oh, good, because that's what inch. I was thinking, but I it was like, I'll wait. I'll wait. All right, what's going through this thing? Just like a piece of string? Um, maybe. Yeah, I got a little hole. A little, maybe just a little bit bigger. Just under quarter inch to you. Yes, that's good. All right, now I'm gonna take this hole. That be it. There you go. All right. Now they have a hole, Kim. Perfect. Step three. We're gonna make all of our cuts. We're gonna bring this eighth inch acrylic over to the X Tool P2 and cut it out. We're just gonna use the uh, Creative Space settings for acrylic. This is a eighth inch acrylic. We got this from our friends over at Cerulean Tides, and I think this will be fine for what they we're have doing. Like hundreds of colors and packs, so you can get Patterns, packs of yeah. colors. Yeah, they have everything you need for acrylic over there. Step four. Time for sublimation. All of our little pieces are cut out of the acrylic. Each one took about seven minutes. They're about eight inches, so not a bad cut time. All right, and next up will be to add our sublimation print. So I went out to design bundles and I just grabbed a fall image. I liked this one because it had something right in the center, and I think that'll be perfect in the center of our little scallop that we made here. I printed a couple of them because we're gonna want to sublimate on both sides. And what we're going to do is we're going to peel off our paper. We're going to sublimate on this side, take it off of the heat press, and then put something heavy on it and let it cool. You don't want to try and do the bending because we're going to need to sublimate on the second side. Once it's cool and everything is back to stiff again, we're going to put it back in the heat press and sublimate on the other side, take it off, put something heavy on it, let it cool. It does tend to warp. That's why you're going to want something nice and heavy on it as it cools down. Then once both sides are sublimated, then we'll do the bending process. We're only going to sublimate on one of these today. All of mine are non-sublimation. And now we're gonna bend them. We're gonna heat up these, uh, this middle part, just the middle part on the top and bottom that we want to bend. We're gonna heat it up with the heat gun and then try to bend it in place. Right, you don't wanna put this in the whole heat press because everything, even the centerpiece, will get soft and it'll be a little too malleable and I'm not sure we can keep it in its shape. So we by need just. Some controlled softening. Yes, so by just doing this center section here, we should be able to twist it and let it cool and it'll stay in that shape, I guess. We'll see. <laughs> Ooh, that's soft. Woo! Right like that? Yep, yep, yep. couple more of those. <laughs> then I'm gonna pass out. Oh, I think it's dry. Oh, look at that! Alright, that was pretty easy. Let's do the other ones. One, two, three. <gasps> there we go. 
that had it. That had to work. That did it. Oh yeah, she's malleable. She's a goo. So where are we going this way? Oh yeah, there you go. Ooh, that's cool looking. Step six, time to hang them. We're just gonna use some of this bead cord it's like jeweler's cord stuff. Like it's got a little sparkle to it. I think this one's, yeah, it's stretchy. I figured it would give it the most spin. <laughs> Maximum spin. Max spin. All right, so we're just gonna put this stuff through the hole and give it a knot. And then I have my little spider. I'm gonna put him in here and give that a little knot. Kim's gonna show me how to make this knot. How long you think about uh, that long? Mm -hmm. I was going to loop it through. What I was telling Garrett is I suggested tying the two, bringing the two ends up and just putting them together. It just makes for a little cleaner knot. Hmm. But will it spin as, as spinny <laughs> with two instead of one? It will, well, will it hold it? I might need to burn it. There it goes. What do you think? I think it'll spin. Are you getting spin? <laughs> Let's see some of your ship knots. I thought we'd discussed this. I don't know <laughs> ship about any knots. <laughs> I thought you were in the Navy. I was in the air part of the Navy. <laughs> I didn't tie boats down. I am not a knotsman. <laughs> knotsman. I don't even think that knot did anything. It's just a knot for knot's sake. It's a knot for it's a show knot. That's a show knot. <laughs> <laughs> Step seven. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> Profit. <laughs> Alright, so I think all in we're about like seven dollars, seven fifty. Yeah, I think you can get a sheet of the acrylic for less than $10. You can get two of these out of one sheet of 12 by 19 acrylic. That leaves it at about $5 for materials. And then they cut in like seven minutes. Yeah, so. it was a seven minute cut. So it was like a dollar, dollar fifty in laser time. Mm -hmm. but. And you can sell these anywhere from $15 to $25. It depends on personalization, what you've got going on. These are pretty simple. Yeah, sublimating the personalization would be super easy. Yeah. Throwing somebody's name on there like that? Yeah, super easy. I think they're pretty cool. I do too. I think they came out great. I think they were quick. I think the longest time was the design, right? That yeah. That was easy. <laughs> Showed you guys how to make an easy design. And we are about out of time. So if you are not going to join us for the patron after show, like all these guys, our patrons we love you guys we will see you next week where we'll do it build it and make it again and don't forget to pop in on tuesdays where we do a test cut tuesday we test something out see if our design works live <laughs> i'm gonna go hang these things up oh i'm gonna go hang these up in the wind <laughs> where else are you gonna go